How's it going, everybody? This is Rob Novacast back with a, another video for you guys. Um, yeah, we're doing another reading video, continuing the the book of uh, Stones to Abigail. <clears throat> um, by the way, I'm actually looking into other fan fictions and other like any writing that I could you know look at and read. If anybody has anything entertaining in mind, uh, please let me know. But, yeah, we're going to be looking at Chapter 6. You guys can't be tapping the table, which I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. But, anyways, um, yeah, Chapter 6. By the way, for those who don't know, this is a book from uh, the late and infamous, infamous Greg Onision. So, anyways, Chapter 6. Quite a few days passed. Now, if I recall some bull crap from, uh, some bull crap happened in the last chapter. If you guys want to, if you guys want to know what happened, you can read, you can, you can attempt to listen to me read to the chapter five or the previous chapters. But anywho, anywho, chapter six. And, by the way, in case people are confused about my lack of um, enthusiasm, the writing in this is bad. So, here we go. Quite a few days pass. Everything li felt like it was falling into place with Abby. She had become the center of my world, and I felt like I was finally, really, finally enjoying my life there are two finalies there don't know why feel like it should have been it should have said i feel like i was finally enjoying my life the really finally shouldn't have been added but anyway one that by the way that was the first that's the first paragraph that is the first fucking paragraph guys come on One morning, my nose woke me up. There was an unfamiliar but pleasant smell filling my bedroom. For the first time in a long while, breakfast was ready for for my sister and me. My mom had made eggs and waffles. To my surprise, Rick was again sitting at our table. Him being very or get, being there completely explained why my mom was making breakfast. I watched everyone already sitting and said good morning. Rick seemed a little nervous and again my mom asked that we all have a talk. I sat down so I I sat down not so sure as or sure of what to expect. Rick spoke, listen, I don't want to tiptoe around this topic your mother and I want to move in together. My sister's arm went limp as she was attempting to eat while or eat making her fork smack against the her plate as she dropped her jaw simultaneously. While she was normally over dramatic about most everything, her reaction pretty much summed up how I too was feeling this time. My mom tried to soften the blow by saying, and yes, this is going to be a pretty big transition for all of us, but we'll make it something, or make it through. It began to hit me hard as I thought things through. There was no way Rick was moving in with us. Our little condo was already overcrowded. Rick was the one with the higher paying job, which meant most everything I knew was at risk to change. I began to feel panic. You, uh, mom, I have Abby, I said. My mom looked concerned and Rick blurted out, listen, we're, we're not going to break up your relationship for the sake of ours. We'll figure something out. Okay. I felt like I was going to pass out. 
I kept thinking about the horrible timing that I finally had something or someone I bonded with more than anyone else and they were going to make it far more difficult for me to be with them because of what Rick had said it would work out but I barely knew him I had learned some time before to trust people on what you know them to be not what you hope them to be Rick had been around long enough for me to see him in a significantly positive or negative light in that I realized hope was all I had I stood up and said I'm sorry I'm not hungry I'm going to go wait for the bus everyone silently sat at the table awkwardly pushing around their food as I gathered my things as I brushed my teeth I could hear my sister crying and ranting dramatically in the background once again she reacted externally how I felt inside Davis could see my upset posture out his window as the bus pulled up so I so as I walked up okay hold on that one felt awkward hold on Davis could see my upset posture out his window as the bus pulled up so as I walked up the stair er, steps this time he screamed I love you so much I wish you were my boyfriend I hated myself for giving in yet again but laughter escaped me my life was turning completely upside down and Davis was there to make me experience a fragment of happiness I sat down Davis grabbed me and hugged me someone sitting a few steps ahead screamed ew homos which Dave which Davis yelled back I love him this is love he jumped onto the seat with his little body and pressed our faces side by side look at our love I patted his arm that had been wrapped around my sarcasm wrapped in me sarcastically and he released me to sit down immediately he said so what's up buddy how can I turn that frown upside down Poopy poo poop what the fuck okay <laughs> he could see I was still a bit upset and didn't really want to talk to talk so he did his classic well I'm always here it was nice having Davis to keep me afloat since I had I began my teacher's assistant work with mr. Hansen I felt buried in needless information about his job he was constantly ranting about the low pay working conditions and hours despite all this he would still remind me about how happy it made him to see some students overcome the horrible condition of our school and succeed regardless miss Robertson would stop in from time to time while I graded papers whenever she visited she and mr. Robinson or mr. Hansen would bombard me with questions they would ask me how I liked being a TA random questions about the state of the school and discuss academic uh, politics I kind of felt sorry for Miss Robinson we never had normal conversations it was almost always about her job almost as if that was all she knew while she was visiting that day miss Robertson could tell me or could tell I was upset about something so she asked and I confessed I was pretty bummed out I wasn't specific about about I wanted Abby to be the first person to know 
what I uh, what hold on this this one's awkward it's and it's like there's no like stops I wasn't specific because I wanted Abby to be the first person to know what was going on between my mom and Rick Miss Robinson replied well this better not have nothing to do with you know who I found the fact that she was still butting in into my relationship with Abby to be incredibly annoying. I said nothing in response, hoping ignoring her bringing up Abby would give Miss Robertson the hint I didn't want her talking about Abby. Finally, it was time for PE, and Abby greeted me as happily as she ever did. I didn't want to ruin her day, so I asked her to call me later that night to t uh, talk without hinting too much regarding what it was. Despite my efforts, she could see it in my eyes. She said, if you have something on your mind, I really want you to tell me. I tried to think of the best way to say it, but couldn't. So I just told her that I, that I had to tell her later. She said, after school, and I agreed. Throughout gym class, or throughout gym class, her behavior changed completely. She picked up so well on my concerns that it consumed how she interacted with almost every person and thing around her. The mere worry of some bad news caused her to appear significantly depressed, almost as bad as before we began talking. Abby was waiting by my bus as I walked out of school. I had been thinking about the best way I could tell her all day. You have to tell me, she said before I even finished walking. I didn't delay my response as she had waited long enough. My mom's boyfriend is talking about having my mom move in with him. He said, or he said, he'd, there's like no, it's just a, it's just a, a was it apostrophe? So it's like it, it, he's trying to continue the thing, but there should be a period there. So yeah, it's talking about having my mom move in with him, period. He said he'd make things work with you and me despite the change. Abby kept looking back and forth at me, period. There's a comma there. There should be a period. Then to the side, speechless. I continued. I can't leave you behind, she interrupted as tears already began forming in her face or in her eyes. I can go with you. I paused in disbelief. In a single moment, she expressed as much desperation for me as I had been feeling the last few days. It was as if every action she took repeatedly proved her perfect alignment with my intentions. We were becoming like gears turning in sync, unable to be slowed or broken by any obstructions. You are made of stupid. She waited for a response, looking at me nervously. I smiled and said, actually, I was thinking I might be able to stay here alone. My mom owns the condo, and I'm 17, so I don't know. Misspelled, I don't know, by the way. They spell it D-O-N-N-O, -N -N -O, which, if I remember correctly, that's D-O-N-N-U. I'm like, I feel like this freaking book is making me dumber. No, it's not. It's don't. Yeah, no, it's. No, if they, if they, if they, it's. I don't know. I think they're like they're trying to do like the, like the bad grammar. Like I don't, I don't know. Like freaking. Uh, I know. I'm sure I'm getting it corrected by somebody, but it's don't know. Two words. Don't know. Abby's nervous, nervous expression faded slightly. And she said, have, it, have you talked to your mom about that? 
I replied with no, but I won't let us get split up. And I paused, still in disbelief that she was willing to come with me if I left. Abby started to smile, feeling more certain I wouldn't leave her behind. I continued, I'm glad you said what you did. I know now either way it should work out. She giggled excitingly and immediately jumped on me while simultaneously wrapping her legs around me, happily kissing every part of my face but my lips. I said, whoa, laughing and thinking in the back of my mind about how surprisingly easy she was to carry. Later that day, I spoke to my mom about potentially staying home and continuing to work or go to the same school considering I was graduating the next full school year. She seemed she seemed hopeful, but said she had to talk to Rick, who had returned to his home past the mountains to work. When we spoke on the phone, Abby and I mostly stayed away from talking about the move. We focused on topics like uh, colonizing the moon, strange creatures we have yet to discover in the ocean, and if robots will become as or so much like humans one day that they'll begin to have the same legal rights as us. Some topics were pretty silly, but we didn't really care. It was just fun to hear what we could come up with talking about things we barely imagined till then. At some point in the night, Abby brought up a more serious topic. I noticed something about you. When we're in gym class, she said. I replied, asking her to elaborate. She said, it wasn't just in gym class. Once I saw it, I began to notice it everywhere. You barely pay attention to any other girls, even when they talk to you. You rarely even looked at them most of the time. I laughed and replied, I do that intentionally, you know. She asked why, and I continued, Because I don't want to risk you thinking for a second you're not the most important person to me. She replied in a amused tone, even when I'm not around, I added, or I added, when you're not around, I like to pretend you're still, or you still are. So in a way, there's no such thing as being without you. She warmly laughed and we continue, uh, continually went back to much lighter topics. Abby wound up falling asleep on the phone with me, listening to her rest how peaceful she sounded. Despite knowing it wasn't true, I couldn't help but feel like everything was still peaceful. And that was chapter 8. Well, chapter 6, sorry. I, I say chapter 8 and it's like on the video it says chapter 6 in big bold letters. And numbers. But anyways. Uh, I don't know why. But I feel kind of sick. Like nauseated. It could be the bad writing. It could be the. Just. I don't know. Bad characters. Bad writing. Either way. Just bad. All over. Anywho. I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Truly appreciate it. If you guys can, please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you guys want to follow us on social media, links are in the description down below. As well as check out our daily content and the weekly podcast. With that being said, this is Rob Novicast signing off. Have a good one. Take care. And I'll see you guys next video.